Batman. Batman. Jump inside your Batmobiles, everybody. This is gonna be one intense adventure. Batman is one of the most popular superheroes ever thought up. That's right, folks. We're gonna be listing off 107 facts about Batman the Animated Series. Presented by Cartoon Hangover. Number one. Batman the Animated Series was developed by Bruce Tim and Eric Radomski. Number two. The series was produced by Warner Brothers Animation and aired on the Fox Network from September 5th, 1992 to September 15th, 1995. Number three. Going by original air dates, the series ran for four seasons. By production order, it has two seasons. There are 85 episodes total. Number four. The second season of the show was titled The Adventures of Batman and Robin and featured more of the famous sidekick. Number five. You're probably wondering why they changed the title. As the show continued, the Fox Network pushed more and more for it to be a children's show. They felt that Robin was their means of achieving this. And they figured kids haven't seen the Batman movies where they did this to Robin. Dang it, Hollywood. Why? Why? Number six. Eventually, it was mandated that Robin appear in every episode of the show. Number seven. Batman the Animated Series was the first installment in the DC Animated Universe, which includes other animated series and films in its canon, such as Superman, the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, Static Shock, and Justice League. Number eight. The DC Animated Universe is sometimes referred to as the Timverse after Bruce Tim, who frequently contributes to the continuity. Previously, it was sometimes referred to as Diniverse after Paul Dini, a writer who departed from Warner Brothers in early 2004. Number nine. In the episode Joker's Favor, Joker looks at Charlie's card and reads out, Charles Michael Collins. When we're later shown the card, there's no middle name on it. Number 10. The series was influenced by Tim Burton's Batman films, as well as the theatrical Superman cartoons that were produced by Fleischer Studios in the early 1940s. Number 11. Period features like black and white title cards, vintage color schemes, and film noir flourishes were utilized to capture an otherworldly timelessness that Bruce and Eric felt the Burton films had. Number 12. Bruce and Eric created a short animated plot to pitch the series to networks. The two voiced it themselves, Bruce providing Batman's grunts and Eric providing everything else. Number 13. Backgrounds for the series were developed by Eric. In order to better capture the film's nowhere vibe that him and Bruce wanted, he would start by painting everything in black and then add the visual highlights. Number 14. Voice director Andrea Romano wanted an inherently sexy voice for Batman. She felt that Batman had a dangerousness that could appeal to women. Number 15. I guess that Kevin Conroy was inherently sexy enough because he landed the role of the Dark Knight after nailing his audition. Number 16. In the episode Showdown, the governor of the Utah Territory is voiced by actual U.S. Senator Patrick Lathy. Lathy is a fan of Batman. Number 17. The main title song for the Batman animated film, Mask of the Phantasm, includes vocal that sounds like Gregory and chanting. In actuality, the chorus members were repeatedly singing the creator's names backwards. Number 18. Tim Curry was originally set to voice the Joker, but producers felt it just wasn't the right fit. Number 19. When they held auditions again for the role, they cast Mark Hamill. You may know him as Luke Skywalker. Number 20. At Warner Brothers' insistence, the animated Penguin's appearance is straight from the live-action film Batman Returns. Because no photographs of the incomplete film were allowed to be released, Bruce came into the film set and sketched Danny DeVito, who was playing the character in costume. Number 21. Jarvis, the villainous Mad Hatter, was played by Roddy McDowell. McDowell is famous for the Planet of the Apes films. Number 22. In the film Mask of Phantasm, the mobster Sal Varesta was voiced by Avi Vigoda. Number 23. The new Batman Adventures was a continuation of Batman the Animated Series that aired on Warner Brothers Television Network from September 13th, 1997 to January 16th, 1999. Number 24. The follow-up series was one season by production order and two by original air dates. In total, there are 24 episodes. Number 25. When the series moved from Fox to WB as the new Batman Adventures, producers felt Robin should be younger to appeal to kids more. They had Dick Grayson segue on to being Nightwing, which allowed Tim Drake to enter the picture as more of a youthful Robin. Number 26. Despite the fact that they didn't exist at the time, police blimps can be seen throughout the series. Bruce felt that they suited the show's style. Number 27. Network censors went easy on Batman, but there were times where they needed violent, insensitive, or erotic content to be changed. Avery Coburn, an executive, once had to put his foot down so Alfred would not be pooped on. Bruce, the network says that it's not in their practice to show animal excrement hitting anyone on a children's show. They want us to cut the back guano landing on Alfred's jacket and send them a fixed version of the episode. Number 28. Harley Quinn actually originated from the animated series. She proved to be so popular that she became a regular villain in the comics. Number 29. Another cartoon character from the series made the transition to the comics as well. This being Renee Montoya. Number 30. The show had seven two-part episodes. They were the Cat of 
of the Claw, Feet of Clay, Two-Face, Heart of Steel, Robin's Reckoning, Shadow of the Bat, and The Demon's Quest. Number 31, Mr. Freeze's backstory was completely rewritten in the animated series. While the comic canon had established him as a criminal who made a boo-boo while trying to build a freeze ray, the show gave him a more tragic past as a scientist trying to cure his dying wife. Number 32, in addition to changing his past, the animated series also spurred DC to bring Mr. Freeze back to life. In the comics, he had been killed off some years prior. Who needs the Lazarus Pit when you have popularity? Number 33, beware the great Ghost is one of the show's most beloved episodes. It featured an actor who once played the superhero Grey Ghost in a television series. He was typecast following the role and financially struggled. The interesting part, the character was voiced by Adam West, who underwent similar experiences after playing Batman in the 1960s series. Number 34. Show creator Bruce provided the voice for the villain Ted Dimer in the same episode. Bruce is actually a huge fan of the 1960s Batman. I guess it must have been fun working alongside a childhood hero. Number 35, John Glover, the voice of the Riddler, also played Dr. Jason Woodrew in 1990's live-action Batman film, Batman and Robin. Number 36, you can also find John in Smallville playing Lionel Luther. He must really like his DC media. Number 37, the Riddler's real name is Edward Nigma. It's a play on the word Enigma. Number 38, in the animated series, there's a scene where Bane is about to break Batman's back over his leg. Ouch. This this parallels the confrontation between the pair in the Batman comic. The difference, you ask? Comic Batman's back really does get broken, but animated Batman manages to avoid this fate by throwing a batarang into Bane's Venom device. I know who I'd rather be. Number 39. Batman and Batgirl are tied for having the most voice actors. Batman was voiced primarily by Kevin Conroy, but Gary Owens and Michael Ironside also portrayed him in the episode Legends of the Dark Knight. Batgirl was voiced by Melissa Gilbert in the original series, Mary Kay Bergerman in Sub-Zero and Tara Sharendoff in the Gotham Knights. Number 40. Paul was influenced to create Harley Quinn after watching Arlene Sorkin in a fantasy sequence on Days of Our Lives. She then went on to voice the character she inspired. Now that's pretty awesome. Number 41. Paul and Arlene are friends and attended college together. Number 42. At this point, we're all used to actors using different voices to play Bruce Wayne and his alter ego Batman. But Kevin Conroy was actually the first animated Batman actor to do this. That's awesome. Number 43. Bruce's Batman design was inspired by the original Space Ghost from the 1960s cartoon. Number 44. Talk about a man of many Batman voices. Ron Perlman played Killer Croc and Bane in the animated series. Dr. Double X in Batman, The Brave and the Bold, and Slade in Teen Titans. Then he went on to play the Dark Knight himself in the game Justice League Heroes. Man, this guy is busy. Number 45. The new Batman Adventures takes place during the same time frame as Superman, the animated series. Number 46. Bruce is often given credit for the visual style of the series, when in actuality it's based on the artwork and direction from Eric Radomski. Number 47. The characters, though, were based on Bruce's designs. Number 48. The producers of the show coined a term Dark Deco for its distinct combination of noir imagery and art deco design. Number 49. The Adventures of Batman and Robin game for the Sega CD contain 16 minutes of animated segments. These are sometimes referred to as the series lost episode. Number 50. The first 65 episodes of the show were outsourced to numerous overseas animation houses, including Spectrum Animation, Dong Yang Animation, Sunrise, Studio Junio, Blue Pencil, Akam, and TMS Entertainment. Number 51. TMS Entertainment was responsible for animating the show's first season opening theme sequence. Number 52. Akam, best known for its expansive work in animating The Simpsons, was eventually fired because of its inconsistent animation in episodes such as Cat Scratch Feet and Moon of the Wolf. Number 53. The following 20 episodes of the series was largely completed by Dong Yang Animation. Number 54. Three feature films were created based on the series. Mask of the Phantasm, Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, and Batman Mystery of the Batwoman. Number 55. Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero was actually produced as a tie-in film to the live-action Batman and Robin, but because the latter performed so poorly, Sub-Zero was delayed until the following year. Number 56. 
In addition to the two supervillains mentioned previously, the supervillain lockup also made the cut to comics. Number 57. The character Clayface was modified in the comics to match his animated appearance, which was in turn inspired by the 1960s version of the character. Number 58. Alan Burnett, a producer and head writer of the show, came up with the concept of Harvey Dent or Two-Face having a pre-existing dual personality issue. Number 59. Because she appeared so regularly on the show, Poison Ivy began to appear more in the comics as well. Number 60. Bruce's parents were murdered when he was 8 years old. I kinda wanna give him a hug. Number 61. The pilot episode of the series was titled On Leather Wings, which featured Man Bat as the villain. Number 62. Though Man Bat was the first episode produced, it was the second to air. Number 63. The first episode of the series to air was The Cat and the Claw Part 1. This is probably because Catwoman appears in the episode and Batman Returns, the live action film that featured her, had done so well recently. Number 64. The show's theme song was initially a variation of Danny Elfman's theme. For for Tim Burton's Batman films. Number 65. Later on in the production of Batman the Animated Series, a new theme with a similar style was composed by Shirley Walker. Number 66. The series score was influenced by Danny and Shirley's work on the live action Batman films as well as 1940s film noir music. Number 67. Though the industry standard is to record actors' dialogue tracks separately, recording sessions for Batman the Animated Series had all the actors in one studio simultaneously. Number 68. During recording sessions, all actors would sit down except Mark Hamill. He was allowed to stand in order to better capture the manic energy of the Joker. Number 69. Numerous episodes of the show were adapted from storylines in the comic book, including Off Balance, The Demon's Quest, Almost Got Him, and the film Mask of the Phantasm. Number 70. Batman Mask of the Phantasm was going to be a direct-to-video film, but the studio decided to give it a theatrical release. Filmmakers were given the difficult task of completing the film in eight months, despite the fact that animated films typically took well over two years. Number 71. For the film, Alan Burnett wanted to focus on a romance because the series had yet to do so. He wanted to get into Bruce's head. Number 72. The film took inspiration from Citizen Kane for flashbacks, both centered around loss and the passage of time. Number 73. Shirley Walker, the composer for the film has said that its score is one of her favorite works. Number 74. Batman the Animated Series won four Emmy Awards during its run, including Outstanding Animated Program. Number 75. The first Robin, Dick Grayson, was aged up due to censorship rules restricting depictions of child endangerment. Number 76. Writers made sure to familiarize the audience with Harley Dent prior to the episode depicting his transformation into Two-Face. They wanted to make sure that viewers were shocked by the upright Harvey Dent becoming a villain. They felt that he was one of the show's best characters and that his origin was one of the best episodes. Number 77. Al Pacino was offered the role of Two-Face. Dang it, that would have been awesome. Number 78. The title of the show is never shown. Creators felt that Batman was already an iconic and instantaneously recognizable figure, so it was a bit unnecessary to spell it out. Number 79. This changed when the show transitioned into the adventures of Batman and Robin. The title was clearly shown through the third, fourth, and fifth seasons. Number 80. Over 150 actors auditioned for the role of Batman before Kevin Conroy was selected. Number 81. Producers wanted for quite some time to use the villain Firefly in the show, but Fox refused to allow any character to be threatened or harmed by fire. Number 82. Eventually, Batman the Animated Series jumped over to the WB, and when this happened, they were finally allowed to have Firefly on the show. Number 83. Henry Polik II was the voice actor for Scarecrow. While recording for the episode Dreams in Darkness, he was having issues with his throat, which is why the character sounds different from his appearance in Fear of Victory. Number 84. After Dreams of Darkness, Scarecrow's appearances were reduced. When he appeared in the episode Trail, he had no dialogue because Henry was recovering from throat surgery during its production. Number 85. Harley Quinn was originally going to be a one-off character and was even added to her first episode last minute. In the episode Joker's favor, the Joker was going to cross-dress as a female model in order to act as bait for a trap. However, writers felt that his ego wouldn't allow this and created Harley Quinn to act as his henchwoman and take his place. Very good choice, everyone. Very good choice. Number 86. In most episodes, the character can be found reading a Tiny Toons Adventure magazine. Number 87. The opening sequence for the show is basically a remake of the pilot used to sell the show to Warner Brothers. In the pilot, Batman foils a jewelry heist on a rooftop and leaves behind robbers for the police to clean up. 
number 88. As the start of the DC Animated Universe, Batman the Animated Series is the cartoon with the most spin-offs ever. Number 89. It's hard to think of him voicing anyone but Batman, but Kevin Conroy actually auditioned for the role of Harley Bullock, the disgruntled GCPD detective. Man, that would've just been weird. Number 90. After the completion and review of each episode's storyboard, Fox would send back pages of a single spaced list of restrictions, including things like no open wounds, no blood, no smoking, or no strangling. They were quite picky about content and story as well. Number 91. A pitch for a potential storyline involving Catwoman and Black Canary teaming up was interrupted by Fox demanding to know where Robin was. Writers asked if he could be omitted for just one episode, and Fox felt it best to omit the entire episode concept. God dang it, that would have been awesome. Number 92, Alfred Pennyworth and Commissioner James Gordon are two of the show's most important characters. Despite this, they have never spoken to each other throughout the entire series, even when they're right next to each other. Number 93, Max Shrek, a character from the live action film Batman Returns, was meant to appear in the animated series. This was scrapped and he was replaced with another character. Number 94, Alan Burnett revealed that he's a big Alfred Hitchcock fan. He was able to get John Vernon and Roscoe Lee Brown who appeared in Hitchcock's Topaz to play roles in the show. Number 95, Anthony Hopkins was offered the role of Mr. Freeze. Number 96, during its run on the WB, the series was moved from Saturday morning to Sunday evenings. This was one of the first times an animated series created for Saturday morning moved to a prime time slot. Number 97, the episode Christmas with the Joker, the Underwellers, and POV were modified from their original scripts due to the demands of broadcast standards and practices. Number 98, Creator Bruce Timm and story editor Sean Catherine Derrick would clash with one another while working on the show. The latter felt that the directors and storyboard artists were taking too many liberties with the script. Though she was the first story editor hired for the show, many of the episodes she worked on were rewritten against her wishes. Number 99. Robin's costume was based on Neil Adams' redesign of the outfit donned by Tim Drake in the comics. The R became a regular non-italicized one in order to distinguish Dick Grayson from Tim. Woo, almost there, number 100. Later, when Tim Drake was brought onto the series, the color scheme of the uniform was changed to red, yellow, and black. Number 101, Dr. Carl Rossum, who appears in the episode Heart of Steel and his Silicone Soul, has his name taken from the 1920 sci-fi fiction play R.U.R., which stands for Rossum's Universal Robots. The play introduced the word robot into the English language. To reference this in the episode Heart of Steel, Rhonda Duane's license plate reads R.U.R. You are. Number 102. Coincidentally, or not, Dr. Carl Rossum, who is a robotics engineer, is voiced by William Sanderson, who also played J.F. Sebastian, the replicant creator in Blade Runner. Number 103. The new Batman adventures marked the first time that Nightwing and Tim Drake's Robin appeared in an animated series. Number 104. Paul Dini and Chip Kidd have established that the new Batman adventures takes place three years after the end of Batman the Animated Series. Number Number 105, Batman, the animated series treatment of Batman's alter ego, Bruce Wayne, was a notable change from how he was typically handled. Previously, media often had Bruce deliberately play up his empty-headed playboy billionaire persona. In the animated series, he was depicted as serious, intelligent, driven, and actively involved in his corporation. Number 106, the animation style of the new Batman adventures differed significantly from that of Batman, the animated series, due to budgetary restrictions and in order to better match Superman the Animated Series. And finally, we made it number 107. Though Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures are technically two separate series, all episodes of both are included in the Batman the Animated Series complete DVD box set. Talk about a deal. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to like the video so we know that you like the video. Let us know which facts we missed and don't forget to comment which 107 video we should do next. Have a great day, Fredheads, and remember, Frederator loves you.